is Bob Beckel. This is Cal Thomas, a conservative who is pro-life, a liberal who once worked for Jimmy Carter, who favors a smaller government, who believes in big government. And in a town full of cheap shot artists, I've never heard Cal take a cheap shot. But even when he's wrong, he's likable. And this is Common Ground. And this is Common Ground. Welcome again to Common Ground, a video version of Bob Beckles and my bi-weekly USA Today column in which we try to figure out how to bridge Washington's partisan divide. Well, Bob, guns are back in the news again, and uh, hey, I, hate hey. to, I hate to use your favorite slogan from the NRA, but guns don't kill people, Bob. People kill people. Do you have like a do you have like a, a monument to the NRA in your backyard or no, something? No, not at all. I, no, I'm just stating well, a fact. Look, here's listen. I, I, you know, I'm not as much of, a, of an anti-gun liberal nut as you may think I am. I, I mean, I keep shotguns because I hunt and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. But, but pistols are the things that are, are the most dangerous, cause the most crime. And what happened? But the Republican conservative Supreme Court issued one of the worst decisions in the last hundred years when they struck down Chicago's gun control law, which disavowed the use of hand, owning or using hand guns in the city of Chicago. It was ex absolutely obscene what they did. Bob, and that's the price we pay for Alito and Roberts oh, and these other women. Oh, please, look, two things. First of all, last year on one weekend in Chicago, there were 54 shootings. Ten people died as a result of those shootings in a city that has some of the toughest gun laws in the country. Now, the criminals who got the laws wouldn't obey laws already on the book. So how are we going to get to a point where if we pass even tougher laws, as the Chicago City Council recently did a few days ago, that criminals are going to suddenly say, hmm, those laws are awfully tough. I guess I better not get a gun and use it illegally. The issue is where do they get the guns, and I think they get those from gun shows. But let me tell you, talk about now, this. I agree with you on the gun shows. Oh, okay. I agree right, with good. you on gun shows. See, we got to common ground well, early. Listen, I, th I do think that you shouldn't just be able to walk in to some gun show, pick up a gun with no background check that you would be required someplace else. So, like you're not a fundamentalist on gun ownership, I'm not a fundamentalist on the Second okay, Amendment. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear that. Let me go back to what Chicago did after the Supreme Court came out with that outrageous decision. They passed a bill, 45 to nothing, in yep. Chicago City Council, which, among other things, says, okay, you can own a gun because the Supreme Court says you can, yeah. but you can only have one. Yeah. You can't take it outside, including on your front porch, yeah. which is another good thing. You have to have four hours of training uh, in, in handgun use mm -hmm. in, in a uh, classroom. And you have to have one hour on a range, and the good news is Chicago yeah. doesn't have any ranges, Except for the cops, which means yeah. that you have to go out someplace and <laughs> yeah. find it. Now, look, the Supreme Court may have said it's okay to own guns, but they did not uh, put a If we want to put as many uh, roadblocks in the way as we possibly can, we're going to do it to keep guns out of people's hands. Well, let me tell you why this is not going to fly on appeal, and there already have been cases. Every time, let's take Roe versus Wade on abortion, and this is an important case to, uh, to analogize. Every time that the pro-life people tried to put restrictions on, as the left says, a woman's right to choose, a federal court, even the Supreme Court, struck it down. I think there's precedent for that. You're going to find the same thing on the Second Amendment. Well, let, let me, let's, let's go back here. Look, the, the, I'm not going to argue the Second Amendment to you because the Second Amendment, as far as I'm concerned, when they talked about a militia, they were talking about a time when we were trying to free ourselves from, from the British monarchy and all that. The times have changed. Maybe, I know you probably covered the Revolutionary War, but... Uh, look, ageist. The uh, ageist, there you go. But look, here's, here's my fundamental point, and that is that these guns in a house, in the last time they took uh, the totals in 1999, the federal government determined there were 3,000 some odd children who were killed mm. in their homes, or excuse me, killed by, by guns. Now. A lot of those were kids, like just last week, in the San Fernando Valley in California, a nine-year-old kid playing with his father's gun kills his two-year-old brother. Now, I don't care how many people think they're going to be saved from some criminals or something, you're not going to make up for 3,000-some-odd kids being killed. Well, Bob, we can tell anecdotal stories all day long. For example, just a couple of weeks ago in Forestville, Maryland, not too far from where we're doing our little video blog today, there was a guy who invaded somebody's home. He had a gun. He shot at the resident. Fortunately, the resident had access to his own gun, shot back, and killed the guy. So we can tell stories like that all day long. Look. Fire in, can either be used to warm a house or an arsonist can use it to burn it down. A car can be used responsibly or a drunk driver can kill somebody driving 80 miles an hour. It's not the gun, it's not the fire, it's not the car, it's the intent of the person behind it. And you cannot control fully human nature to cover every circumstance. Did, did you practice that? No, I said, this is why things. I'm so I good. I just make I, these look, up as I go along. Look, let's see if we can find some common ground right. here. Let's go back to this. We agree that you, you ought to be able, you, ought, you can't go into gun shows and just buy guns indiscriminately. Right. And I'm for training. Okay, I'm, I'm and training. training with handguns. Firing range. And the, there ought to be, how about locks on handguns? Uh, no problem, as long as you can get them off to 
waste the criminal when he comes into your house. Well, if you can't get a lock off of a gun, you probably should have a gun. <laughs> but anyway, so I, so we can agree on that. Uh, and the other thing I think we could probably agree on is that the people most afraid of these things are cops and paramedics who have to go into these houses. Agreed. That's another yeah. good reason for locks on guns, yeah. so the police can feel somewhat secure if they go into a domestic violence issue, for example. So, all right, so we can find some agreement on that. You're still going to be a gun nut. I'm still going to be opposed <laughs> to having handguns, but there you go. That's some common ground. Hey, uh, check out our column in the paper and on USA Today's opinion website at opinion.usatoday.com. Now, we're taking a brief break for the summer, so thanks for, think for tuning in and come back in September for the next installment of Common Ground.